Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and clown fish. I'm also a huge fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day I'm going to share one of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today, in 2003, Finding Nemo was released in the United States and Canada. Starring Albert Brooks and Ellen DeGeneres, the animated Disney Pixar film became a classic for a generation. Let's look back to learn more about the making of the film and its legacy. I don't have the stats to back it up, but I'm willing to bet that the most popular name for clownfish since 2003 has to be Nemo. If you've ever seen an orange and white fish swimming through an aquarium and you haven't called it Nemo, you're definitely lying to yourself. The same goes for Dory, a surgeon fish, also known as a blue tang. Surgeon fish get their name because they have features on their tails that are as sharp as scalpels. Dory might seem harmless in the movie, but if you ever encounter a surgeon fish in the wild, be careful. These sharp spines aren't just for show. Of course, Finding Nemo's impact transcends the names of childhood pets. Finding Nemo was the first Pixar film to win the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature, and up until Pixar's own Toy Story 3 came out seven years later, it was the highest grossing G-rated film of all time. In 2016, when the BBC surveyed international critics about the best movies of the 2000s, Finding Nemo made the list at 96th place. To be fair though, there were only a few animated films on the list. Spirited Away was ranked fourth. Accolades aside, Finding Nemo is just a really fun, wholesome film, and it appeals both to children and adults. Director and writer Andrew Stanton started working on the scripts before the projects even got greenlit because he was so excited about it. When he finally got to pitch his idea to Pixar executives, they said, you had me at fish. The story is timeless. A father, who happens to be a clownfish, goes out of his comfort zone on an adventure to save his son, also a clownfish. Even 18 years later, the animation holds up. It's incredible to be immersed in the undersea world of the Great Barrier Reef. The movie's art team put a lot of work into developing the beautiful seascape, and you can definitely tell. The animators were required by Pixar to sit in on courses in marine biology and oceanography, and they even took scuba diving classes to see marine life up close. I'd love to scuba dive. But if you may recall from our May 18th episode, the art team for the DreamWorks animation, Shrek weren't as lucky. One animator had to take a mud shower to better understand the fluid dynamics of mud. As accurate as the underwater creatures were, fish don't have the ability to express themselves through facial expressions. The movie would be pretty strange if every line were delivered with a stray face, so instead, Pixar based the fish's facial expressions off of dogs. It's too cute. Spoiler alert, if you still haven't seen Finding Nemo, the movie revolves around Marlin's quest to rescue his son Nemo, who was captured and sent to live in a dentist office aquarium. All the fish in the aquarium are stuck and want to go back to their natural habitats. When Dory finds a diver's mask that says, P. Sherman, 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney, they deduce that this is where Nemo is being kept. Some fans spread a rumor that there really is an orthodontist office at 42 Wallaby Way, but unfortunately, it's a myth. However, in direct response to the film, more people bought clownfish than ever. The demand for them tripled among home aquarium owners. It's kind of ironic that this is what happened, even though the movie itself is about a fish who doesn't want to be trapped in an aquarium. In 2016, a Finding Nemo sequel called Finding Dory was released, grossing over a billion dollars at the box office. It's rare for a sequel to perform as good or even better than the original, but nostalgia is a powerful sales tool. And hey, who doesn't love Dory? Now, let's talk about music. On this day in 2017, NBC debuted its dance competition series, World of Dance. The judging panel featured executive producer Jennifer Lopez, Neo, and Derek Huff from Dancing with the Stars. World of Dance produces dance shows across 25 countries, but their U.S.-based rendition wasn't as successful as producers hoped. 
The series was canceled in March 2021 after four seasons, but during its run, videos from the show earned over a billion views online. For Jennifer Lopez, working on the show was a way to return to her roots. She called dancing her first form of artistic expression. Even though it only ran for a few years, the show still earned the Primetime Emmy for Outstanding Choreography for Variety or Reality Programming in 2019. And now for our final segment of the show, I'm going to be going back into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a May 30th in my life. On May 30th, 2017, I went to see Hamilton. I did not know what Hamilton was about at that point in time. And now I've watched the recording of it on Disney Plus like a million times and I know virtually every single lyric by heart and I'm trying to get my tiny cousins to also be obsessed with it, but only successfully got them hooked on the Muppets version of the entire show. Very sad, but close enough. Um, I loved Hamilton. It was the first time that I had ever seen a musical live. Actually, wait, that's a lie. I think I saw, um, goodness, I saw one before that. Can't remember, but Hamilton obviously is the most memorable one. Um, And I got to see it with most of the original cast too. I saw it at the Orpheum in San Francisco my mom got tickets through the Hamilton lottery and it was a lot of fun. If I could see it live again, I will. I'm I'm sure it'll return back to a Broadway stage at some point in the future after this pandemic gets a little bit better, but um yeah, I would definitely go again. It was very fun, but still listening to it on Spotify is just as fun as well. Thanks for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Come back tomorrow for more stories from the past. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.